Hey, what's up coaches? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's interview, we have coach Harry. Harry is a professional soccer player. He is from the UK and he's had an amazing career. He resides now in Southern California. And in this interview, he shares how he started his soccer training business. And he said something, I think in the middle of this interview that I really liked, he talked about how you never know who is watching and how that will affect your business. So watch this all the way through. I think you're gonna gain a lot of value from this and uh, I'm excited for you to watch this interview. I started off obviously um, in the youth system at Aston Villa. So we have to do our uh, coaching licenses there as part of the sort of academy program. So that's where it kind of started for me, um, which got put on the back burner for the rest of my playing career, if I'm honest. Then I got presented the opportunity to come out to America to play out in California. Um, obviously, I was coming to the back end of my career, so part of the plan was to continue to play but start to build a coaching business out here, you know, in a growing market out in the US. And I started that probably two years ago. Now, I think probably around the beginning of COVID was when we really started to pick up and, and pick up clients. Um, COVID was a tough time for everybody. Um, personally for us as a business, it was actually a good time because clubs had shut down and kids were stuck at home and we had loads of parents reaching out who, who were willing to let us train their kids and they wanted us to train their kids. And, and it, it sort of grew that way organically through recommendations and, and word of mouth. So that's where it really started to pick up my, my coaching journey and, and it has got us to where we are today. Awesome. That's awesome. So, so tell us a bit about your your business. Then, what what does your company specialize in? We specialize in technique training. I'd say so. We're trying to bridge the gap between sort of club um, club practice and them going out and doing stuff on their own and just being that middle that middleman to help really progress their techniques and and understand the game more. I think. Club coach has got a difficult task of really nailing down a certain player's techniques and how they need to improve because they've got so many people to look after. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in the UK, what I've noticed is there's more staff to actually take a kid to the side and work on that. You know, growing up through the youth systems of, of like I say, I started at Watford, Aston Villa, um, went to Brentford, Doncaster, then, then Rangers before I moved here. So I've seen how how the clubs in the UK actually have a good infrastructure and loads of staff to really concentrate on a certain individual's needs. Now out here, there's not that sort of luxury of having that. So we started Prospect Soccer, which is, like I said, a technique training based um, company, as you say, and we, we specialize in that. And we've started to branch out into camps now. We've done camps last year, which, which are going very well. Um, but yeah, I'd say we're just trying to bridge the gap between um, them going out and kicking the ball and, and the club. Awesome, awesome. So how, how did you find that transition from, from the UK to the US then? Um, it was quite natural, if I'm honest. Um, you know, I know I knew what to expect when I come out here. It's a lot different than at home. Um, you know, at home you've got I don't know how many clubs in London, you know, from, from League Two to Premier League, nice. probably got what, 15 <laughs> clubs maybe. Um, you know, in, in California, you've probably got, well, around us, you've got LAFC, LA Galaxy and San Diego. Um, and that's like a three hour, three hour distance, you know. So um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of kids and who aren't in academy setups who need help. Um, so the transition has been good. Um, we've got a lot of kids coming from all over. We've got kids coming down from LA and up from San Diego, which has been great. And it's just it's just implementing what I've learned through my sort of 20, 20 odd year playing career. It's it's just learning, it's just learning how to manipulate the players and, and really change change their mentality and, and get them to think about what they're doing on the field rather than just going out and, and kicking a ball. Perfect. Love that. Love that. So you've been in business is is two 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 and a half years, correct? Yeah, give or take. Yeah. So let me take you back to when you first started your business. What has been your your biggest obstacle since you started? 
field space. Um, there's not a lot of field space around. Um, the clubs take it. Um, the high schools have sort of taken from for school programs and you know any any good facility. You know the big the big clubs around have normally taken that. So that's actually been our biggest hurdle was getting a getting a nice little facility where we can train day in day out. Um, we don't want to be moving around. We don't want to keep trying to find new fields. We want a certain spot where people know we're there. And that's been the biggest struggle, to be honest, so far. Um, other than that, it was just finding the time to fit in all the clients because we've got a real surge of demand. Um, and myself, I'm currently still playing. So it's, it's, you know, we've only got a certain amount of hours in the afternoon and we can fit everyone in. Um, so actually playing and coaching in, in the afternoons is um, is proving difficult, but it's just managing players and trying to group players and trying to get people on the same same page length, uh, sorry, same wavelength and, and going from there. But um, like I say, probably the biggest headache for me was field space at first. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a very common one with with coaches we work with. Um, so how have you how have you gone about that that obstacle then? We've got or a nice you, one now. Still we, finding that? No, so we've got a nice one now. We've managed to sort of lock down. We're, we're at 99% of the time, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, we're currently talking to a couple of higher schools as well now, just recently, very recently, about using their fields that when they're not using them and helping out with their, with their sort of soccer team and, and technique base. So give and take with a relationship there, which is working very well. Um, but like I say, we, we, we managed to find one and, and we've nailed that down. We've been there probably a year and a half now. Um, and just from that, we get more and more clients because the same people walk past, the same people see us and it's, and it eventually they reach out and they say, we've seen your training, it looks very good and, and how can we help sort of thing. So yeah. we got lucky with that, obviously. And obviously being in Orange County, it's, it's expensive. You know, mm -hmm. it's very, very expensive. It's not like we can go and find a bit of land and build a field and, and sort of branch out that way because you're looking at a hell of a lot of money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Awesome. Perfect. So where, where, where do you see private training going in? So you're currently based in the U S so I'll ask you, where do you see private training going in the U S in the next two to five years from now? I think it's growing rapidly. You know, it's a, I don't think it's as big in the UK, like I say, cause you've got the academies and anyone good gets sort of taken and, and then they're looked after from, from that moment forward here, it's a little bit different. They have to go out and work on their, on their own, which it was a different market. Although I've seen it sort of become more popular now in the UK, people we follow on Instagram and stuff, they're starting to do it out there as well. So it's quite good. Um, but I think it's a huge market. And obviously once the World Cup comes here in a, in a few years and and kids start to see their heroes and, and witness the atmosphere and, and what it is, I think it's going to, really take off, which was part of the reason why I decided to move and start to build before, you know, I think there's going to be a big, big surge in after the World Cup comes to the US. Um, for me personally, we want to start to really develop players and then send them back home to Europe. Like if we can get players where we work with them for two or three years on, and they're good already, but we really fine tune their techniques and game understanding and you know, we do game analysis and stuff like that. So eventually, once we get the one or two players we need to send home, we've got the contacts to really give them a chance to go over to Europe and and, and try it there, you know? Yeah, love that, love that. So you've been, well, you're currently playing and mm -hmm. also you've you've been coaching for a while now. So tell mm -hmm. us, like, what for you, what does the perfect training session look like? What should, what should it of... include? So, yeah, we start off with um, warm-up, real generic warm-up, glute bands, that sort of stuff. Go into the SAQ, speed and agility, um, whether they need balance work on a BOSU, whether we use the bungee, um, you know, whether it's proprioception, whatever they do. Um, then we go into a sort of a basic passing drill to get them sort of fired up and lively. Um, then I go into specifics for the last sort of 40 minutes, um, depending on players' positions and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of it's just to get their, their feet moving as fast as their brain. Um, yeah. 
So we work, we work in tents for a short period of time and never rest. It's never walking around. It's never sort of two or three minutes just talking. Like we try and we try and get them moving, get them working hard, and then we give them the rest after that. Um, one one part I specialise in, I'd like to think, is the attacking side. Just because I've played. Sorry, that's my dog. Can you hear her? <laughs> um, he wants to be a well. attacking midfield and and on the wings. I, I like to help players mm. that way um, mm. and just fine tune their techniques. And it's funny because I learn more about techniques the more I coach it. So the more yeah. I teach people how to do it and and I do it myself, I kind of mm. wished I'd have known that when I was playing. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's certain yeah. things that I've tweaked in players' games where I think, geez, if I'd have known that, I might be able to strike the ball better and, and strike from distance. And mm. so, but yeah, that's how a session would go. And we finish, obviously, depending on the player with just finishing or whether they need fitness, we do a little bit of fitness as well, just always just to keep them sharp and top it up. Awesome, awesome. So what's what's the journey that your client uh, takes when they first join your join your your company then? What's the what's the end result you're looking for as a trainer? So first of all, we 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 sit down with them and, and just get to know what they want to do, you know, where they want to go in their career. Because there's, there's people that just come and they want to just come out and get better, and that's fine. There's people that come out and they want to go to Europe. Do you know what I mean? So there's a difference there in, in demands and what, how many sessions we need with them and, and, you know, how long it's going to take. So we go through all that program, um, sit down with the parents and understand that where they're at and what demands I can place on them as a family. Um, then they come out, they train, whether it's once a week, twice a week. Um, I like to try and include them into group sessions the longer I've known them. So if I can, if I can pair one or two, or if I can get three or four into a group that are at the same mm -hmm. level, then we really try and get a nice session in where they, they're challenged against their peers. And, you know, you always find out the ones that really want to compete and they want to impress and the ones mm -hmm. that kind of shy away from it and, and find it a little bit daunting. Yeah. Um, and like I say, we haven't yet got anyone to Europe. We've, we've, we had a guy come over. Um, we've had a guy fly over from the UK for a month. Who's, who's found a club. He's going to be coming back out in July. Um, we've got a guy a year ago who come for a month around Christmas, um, was going to go back to a USL club. And we sat down with his parents and he had, a, he had an opportunity to go to Miami. Um, so we sat down and we just batted through it and what would you rather, you know, would you rather go back to a USL club where you're comfortable? Mm -hmm. Do you regret giving that opportunity up or would you rather go and, and see if you're good enough? And mm -hmm. in the end, he kind of, he kind of realised, he was like, well, I'd rather go and see. And if not, I can always probably drop back to a USL club. Yeah. Um, yeah. He went there, he ended up signing. He's been there for like two seasons now. Um, so, you know, it's just the advice side as well where, Myself and my partner have been at a level where it's, I know what's needed. Mm -hmm. I understand what's needed and I try and give that advice as much as I can. And that was one example where I feel like our advice was pivotal in his decision and he took the, took the tougher route and it, it paid off for him. That's awesome. That's cool. So you guys, you guys do one-on-one -on -one and you guys do uh, small group training, correct? We do. We do one on one. We do small group clinics and we do camps as well. Um, we started camps last summer, which went very well. We're just starting now to launch our elite camps, which is going to be yeah. maximum twenty players um, who are really looking for that training of a high, high caliber. You know, sort of training you do at a pro club in preseason, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's what we're just starting to launch now. Perfect. So some some of the coaches we work with. Uh, they they have a, a fear of moving into into group training, and the fear is because they think that that you can't provide that value to the client that one on one training has. So how do you how do you sort of sell and promote the difference between one on one and small group training to your clients then, to the parents? <clears throat> a lot of it a depends on age. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like the younger they are, they, they switch off after 35 minutes, 40 minutes. They've gone, you know, like they've been at school all day, they're tired and they, they tend to go. When they're with a partner or a group, 
they vibe off each other, they, they get the energy off each other and they, they compete against each other and it flies. So that's one thing I do say is they, they, they tend to compete, they tend to challenge each other. No one wants to be the worst. Someone always wants to be the best and, it's, and it works like that. And a group of three or four, you can still manage it. It's not like you've got 10. You've got, you know, three or four, you can see who's struggling and who needs more work. And um, we always balance it out with individuals as well. So we wouldn't just do groups. You know, we do a group once a month, twice a month, and the rest of it, you're back to individuals. Um, one way we sell that, like I say, is the older boys, um, they get a lot out of it, to be honest. Because they, as you know, coaching older boys and girls, sorry, they they challenge themselves. They know they, they know the levels. They know how hard they should be working. Um, you're just putting a session on which challenge, challenges them mentally and physically. Um, but like I say, they always, they always compete against each other. And how sell it is, is they also find out where they're at amongst their peers. I've got parents come to me sometimes and think, no disrespect, that their kids are well beat up. And I put them in a group and their, their eyes are like, you know what I mean? Like there are kids out there as good, if not better, and they need more work, which yeah. is sometimes a, a good thing to see. And also you have the, the opposite where they're humble when they come in and they're, they're on fire and, and they get a confidence lift from that because they all of a sudden see, hang on, I'm actually probably one of the better ones here. Yeah, yeah, 100% like that. So what would you say to, to a coach, a trainer watching this, this video or listening to it and they want to start a business, but they haven't yet? What, what's one piece of advice you'd say to them to get started? I think just go out there and do it. Just go out there, get a couple of kids, uh, make sure that every session you do is, is what you want to portray as a business like you never know who's watching we've had so many people just walk by and just you know they're stopped for 15 minutes watching and they carry on walking and then in two three weeks we get a call and it's like oh we watched you for like and i'm I, you never know who's watching yeah. so yeah. you know i've had days when i've been out there and i'm tired and it's it's hard to be honest i've trained in the morning i've had a game on the weekend and i'm tired but mm -hmm. i know that if one person walks past and i'm sat there lazy on my phone or whatever it is it's that one person who could go and tell someone else that Ah oh, no, don't train with him. I've seen him. He's lazy. Blah blah blah. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. your reputation's always on the line. So as long as as long as you're getting people coming back for the right reasons, which is a good training session, the kids are developing. I think it will organically grow. You haven't got to do too much work outside of that. Um, so that's that's the only advice I'd give is just make sure that every session is a good session because that's how you're going to grow in the end. Love that, love that. So let me take you back again to, to the beginning when you first started. And yep. how, how did you get your first client? And how many are you currently working with right now? How did I get my first client? Um, I think it was a hand-me-down, actually. I got lucky from one of the boys okay. at the football club. <laughs> so there was a couple of boys doing it on a, on a smaller scale. By that, I mean just doing probably two or three kids in a week just for a little bit of pocket money or whatever. Um, and I think he left and he gave me the kid, um, give me a couple actually at the time. I took them on, started doing it. Um, and then it wasn't till probably COVID time when, like I say, we started to really pick up. Um, so I said I'd have, for the first year, I probably had eight or nine kids that I would do. Um, COVID, we really, really picked up. And I think now probably between myself and my two other coaches, we're probably near like 80, 80, 90 kids, I'd say. On, on a rotation, we've obviously within that, you've got your kids who come every single week, um, set times, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got your kids who come every other week. Then you've got the kids who come, come out of the woodwork every now and then. But I'd say between yeah, 80 and 90. Cool. So what, what, what do you look for when you bring on a new client then into your business? What are you looking for? The first thing, like I said to you before, is, is where they want to go and what they want to be and what they want to achieve. So I know what to demand from them. And, you know, if someone comes and they just want to have fun and learn and, and get better, but, but they don't see it as a career, I'm not going to demand as much from someone who really wants to push themselves. Um, also, the only thing we ask from them is just hard work for one hour. Like, you know, however long the session is, just give me, give me your, your attention, give me your hard work. And if you don't understand something, ask me and we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll go through it. It's just... You know, I'm, I'm there to get you better. But if you don't want to get better, it's going to be very difficult for me. And you make my life hard and you make your life harder. And your parents, mm -hmm. your parents are paying. Do you know what I mean? They're paying money and it's, 
money's hard to come by these days. Do you know what I mean? People work hard for their money. So I don't want you coming here, not working hard, and then it reflects badly on my session as well. So the only thing we say is, is, is come in, work hard, you know, get better every day. And, and, and that's what we ask. And what's your, what's your current sales and, and marketing process? How do you guys market your business? That needs work. <laughs> um, if I'm being <laughs> totally honest, um, we use Instagram ads and, and stuff like that. But the beauty of that, of, of my client base, honestly, is it's all been word of mouth and it's all been recommendations. Like it's not, I think we get the odd one through Instagram for our videos and stuff like that, which I believe if we were to really promote ourselves, we'd get a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but 95% have been recommendations and just, just people recommending and seeing us training and, and stuff like that, which has been, which has been great. I think for us to really branch out and become bigger, which we've just hired a new coach because me and, me and my partners can't take on all the players. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to have to start to look into, you know, marketing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So uh, a question a lot of the coaches in our program always ask is they want, they want to partner with another coach. So you're obviously in partnership, a business partnership. So tell us a bit about what it's like to being in a business partnership and what does it require for it to be successful? My business partnership's very unique, to be honest. So my partner, Rob, he played with me at Watford when I was... Um, we were six. Um, so I've known him. I've been his best friend since I was six. We went through the system at Watford together, ended up at Brentford together randomly, um, ended up at Rangers together for three years, and now we ended up at Orange County together. Um, although I played agent role in that one. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, he, he moved out here to start with me. Obviously, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't do much now because he's still playing and he's waiting for, um, you know, uh, visa processes and stuff like that so he doesn't coach at the moment but he's he's just in the back end um mm -hmm. but you've just got to have trust in your in your in your in your staff you know like we we've had camps our first camp with 80 kids and i didn't know what was going on like we i thought we'd sell 30 tickets blah 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 i end up selling out at 80 um i was director of it um and i've got chris who's our head coach now who i trust and having him and having a couple of others that come along really took the weight off me. And you can't oversee everything. You, you're not yeah. going to be there the whole time. You know, you need people that want the brand to grow as much as you do mm -hmm. and want, want the brand to do better. Like, you know, they, you know, they know if the brand does better, if we do better, they earn more money and it's better for everybody. But, yeah. um, so good staff is, is one thing, man. Like I, I preached that massively to, to Rob after our first, two camps it was like we have to have good staff because if we're not it's the whole thing falls apart and as soon as one or two start questioning your reputation it's it's very hard to win that back um yeah. so it's just having everyone on the same you know wavelength as you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. love that love that so where, where do you see prospect soccer academy in the next five years from now then to be honest i'm gonna be honest and say i don't know we we work on a, um, a few different things, a few different avenues which we want to go down. There's a lot of routes we can go down. You know, the camps are doing great. Um, we're working on a pro program with, um, obviously, being lucky enough to grow up in England and around players that are now doing very well in the Premier League. I'm not going to name drop anyone, but there's probably five or six that are in the Premier League at huge clubs that come over here on holiday who we're going to work with and we're going to train. So we're going to build that up as well. Um, there's the camp stuff, which obviously, which is growing every single year. Um, it's just branching out. I think we could be, definitely we are, if not in the next few years, we will be probably the biggest and the best individual training company in Orange County, in Southern California. Um, we've got two or three great coaches underneath me who we, who we trust. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just going from there like I said the elite camps are something we're venturing into so it's just trying to trying to worm our way through it and see what really benefits us benefits the player and benefits us as a business that's cool that's cool so my, my last question for you and this one's a more of a personal one 
which is something I always love asking trainers, is what, what does failure mean to you? Failure means do better, for one. Mm. Um, learning, from, learning from your mistakes. Like, you know, if you haven't, I always think if, if I've made a mistake on the way, have I prepared, have I prepared well enough in the beginning? Um, I feel like when I prepare, when I'm ready, when I've done all what I need to do, I don't really fail that much. When I've, when I've left it to the last minute or I've let other things get in the way, and I go into a session or, or I turn up to something and I, and I think, ah, it's not going as well as I like. It's normally because before then I've not really done the work I needed to do. Um, so I try just to make sure that I'm prepared in everything I do in all my sessions, in all my camps. So then if it does go wrong, great. I've done everything I could up to then and I'll learn from what happened after that. I think, you know, I, if I've gone into things where I've cut corners and I've failed, I've got myself to blame and I know why it's happened. Mm -hmm. Love that. Love that. Perfect. All right, Harry. Well, first of all, thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us. I know our audience is definitely going to gonna enjoy it. There's your dog. <laughs> yeah. um, now, if anyone's watching or listening and, and wants to follow uh, Prospect Soccer Academy or wants to get in contact with you or you guys, uh, what's the best way of doing that? Obviously, our Instagram's uh, at prospect.soccer. Um, website's prospectsocceracademy.com. Uh, my personal email is harry at prospectsocceracademy.com. So we can be reached on any of them. If coaches want to come out, want to collab, want to come and see a session. Um, we always need coaches for camps of a high caliber, to be honest. So, you know, we're based in Orange County. So if anyone wants to hit me up, I'm, I'm always available. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. So, Harry, I wish you you and your business all the best. Uh, thanks again for your time and look forward to, to at some point in the future connecting again. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Take care.